In this video, I'm going to show you how to use my Voyager LUT pack when you are grading inside of an ACES workflow. So let's dive into Resolve and take a look at what I've already got kind of set up and in place here. So right now, I already have my ACES color management set up. I've set it up in nodes. That's how we're doing all of our color management starting here in 2024 on the channel. And let's just do a quick overview of how I'm pulling that off. So essentially, I just have two steps. I have a group that all three of these shots belong to that is called red because they are all uh, shots that originated on a red. And here at the pre-clip section of that group, I have a node called in, and this is just an ACES transform that is taking me from red wide gamut log 3G10 and into ACES CCT, which is the stock working space for ACES. Now, an important note to make when you are color managing using nodes and you are color managing raw material like these red shots are, you need to make sure that you go to your project settings and you go to your camera raw and you find the raw profile that you're using and you make sure that you are decoding to the proper color space. That's not gonna happen automatically as it does when you're color managing using your project settings. When you're color managing in nodes, you need to manually set this up. And one thing that I'm noticing right now is I actually want my bit depth to be at 16 here. So this is how these settings uh, should be set up, how I would recommend them for you when you're working with raw red material. And that's going to allow you to uh, correctly use this ACES transform that we were just looking at. So I'm going to hit save here. And you can see I've got this input transform. This is getting me into ACES CCT. And because this is happening at the group pre-clip section of my node graph, it's happening before anything that I do here at the clip level. That's perfect. That's what I want. I want to be grading in ACES CCT, not in red wide gamut log 3G10. And then here at the timeline level of my node graph, I have an output transform, an ACES transform that is taking me from my working space of ACES CCT. And in this case, I'm going into sRGB because that represents the uh, calibration of the monitors that I'm grading on for today's video. If I were grading for a traditional streaming or broadcast scenario, this output transform will be set to Rec. 7 or 9, like so. In this case, we're going to stick with sRGB. And so now we've got these two bookends that are forming our color management framework. We've got our input transform into ACES CCT. We've got our color grading that will happen in the middle. And then we've got our output transform from ACES CCT and into, in this case, sRGB. Okay. But now what I'd like to do is take advantage of the creative LUTs in my Voyager LUT pack, which are not set up for the working space that I'm using today. That working space that I'm using today is ACES CCT. My Voyager LUTs are all set up for DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate. And I get asked frequently, can I use Voyager in ACES? Or how can I use Voyager in ACES? And the answer is yes. You just need to pay attention to how it's actually treating your images. Because when I built this LUT pack, I built it under a different color management framework that renders images differently. So using the tricks that I'm going to show you today, using the steps that I'm going to show you today, you can absolutely use Voyager in ACES in a sound way but you do need to be aware that you are going to be seeing your image rendered in a different way than I was looking at when I created these LUTs in the first place, which is neither a good nor a bad thing. It's just something you need to be, need to be aware of. So let's work on implementing a macro level creative transform or a look as Voyager is meant to be uh, deployed here at the timeline level of our node graph. And here's what we're going to do. I'm going to prepend a node by hitting shift S and I'm going to find color space transform here in my open effects and drop this onto my node. And all I'm going to do here is say my input color space is ACES AP1. That's the primary set of ACES CCT. And my gamma is ACES CCT. Now I'm going to go into DaVinci Wide Gamut, DaVinci Intermediate, because this is the color space that my Voyager LUTs are expecting when we apply them. Okay. And then I'm going to turn off my tone mapping and leave my white point adaptation on. All these other settings can be left off or set to none. And I'm going to label this. We'll say this is taking me into DaVinci Wide Gamut. And now here's what we're going to do. I'm going to tap this node and hit Command C. I'm now going to hit Option S to create a new serial node. And I'm going to hit Command V. And here's a fun thing that we can do as of Resolve 18.5. I can simply go over here to my color spaces and hit Swap. And so now I'm going right back the way I came, right? Going back into ACES AP1, ACES CCT, because that's what this output transform is expecting, right? And you can see if I lasso these two adjustments and turn them off and on, nothing at all is changing, right? It's a round trip affair. We're going into another color space and then coming right back out of that color space. What is going to change is what we do next. 
before we move on, let's just go ahead and label this second node. We'll say this is going into ACES CCT. Okay. And so now we've got this section here at the timeline level of our node graph where our image is in DaVinci Wide Gamma Intermediate, which is what my Voyager LUTs expect, right? So I'm going to go over here to my LUTs and I'm going to go into my Voyager folder and let's try out some to some uh, LUTs from the Pro Pack here, some components from the Pro Pack. I'm going to start by creating a, or using a tone uh, foundation. Just audition a few of these different ones, find something that looks nice. I really like Orion so far. Let's stick with Orion here. I'm going to prepend a node from there, and we're going to pick out a tone modifier. We could try Solaris, or Vega, maybe Electra. This is a brighter image, so we're not going to feel as much of the impact of these tone modifiers as we will in other scenes. But I think Solaris is looking nice. And now let's add a palette foundation as well. I'm going to go in and try Mars here. Ooh, that feels nice. That feels filmy, right? One and done. Let's do that. And then let's do one more. Let's go ahead and round things out and do a palette modifier. As I said, you can Sequence these things however you want. This isn't like a set in stone sequence that I'm using here, but this is one way that you can go about things. And I'm going to go to my favorite palette modifier, which is called Hyperion, and see what happens to my saturations there. It's just kind of flattening out the sat on that car, which I actually feel like I don't need to do all up. So I'm going to go to my key output gain and drop that to around a 0.5. And now I've got a custom built look that I've created using Voyager components, and it's happening inside of Aces, right? Let's see how this feels on some other shots. That looks really nice. This shot needs some work at the individual shot level because it's got a bit of a yellowy skew, but there's Voyager implemented as my creative look here within the shot. Same thing here with this one. You know, both of these shots really need to receive an adjustment to their overall balance. Maybe pull things away from yellow and move in a slightly different direction, something like that. And if we go to our previous clip, we can try a similar thing and just uh, go to our balance node, kind of roll things a little bit away from yellow, something like that. Okay. But regardless, this is a really good pipeline that we've set up using ACES and using Voyager within ACES by doing this little kind of round trip into DaVinci Wide Gamut and then back out to ACES CCT. So again, as I said before, the only thing to keep in mind is that these looks, while right now we are using them in a sound way and that they're being applied to an image in the right color space metric, and we've got the right bookends on either piece of this for the larger pipeline that we're using, our ACES pipeline. However, this rendering of the image is not exactly one that was ever intended by the designer, me. So you just want to pay attention to what these components or what your essentials uh, LUTs from that set are doing to the image and make sure that you like it. And don't be afraid to change around your sequencing or to back off your key output gain like I just did in order to tailor something that works really well for you, for your project, for your images, and for your ACES pipeline.